Welcome to the USU Career Studio podcast that helps you navigate your career path. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to tell your friends and family all about it. Subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere else you listen to get access to our newest content. Thanks for joining us for our Friday face-to-face episode. I'm Marissa Armitstead, your host, and I'm excited to welcome alum Courtney Gardner to the show. Say hello, Courtney. Hello. So this month, we are focusing in on the College of Agriculture and Applied Sciences, really looking at some career paths that this degree can help us get to. So with that being said, Courtney, I'd love to have you start our conversation off today just by sharing your your kind of USU experience, right? Your educational background, all of the uh, cool things you were involved with as a student, and talk to us a little bit about how that led to your current position with USU Extension. So take it away, Courtney. Yeah, so I'm excited to be here today. Thank you, Marissa. Um, yes. So I started out at Utah State in 2014. I'm taking it back a few years. I graduated high school and decided USU is where I wanted to be. So I got settled in and was honestly pretty nervous about where I would end up. I college was a new thing to me. I'm a first generation student. So I literally didn't really have anyone to fall back on for anything, for advice, for support. I was kind of on my own. Um, So I started out kind of in political science, actually, um, and just decided I didn't love it. I thought I would love it. I thought because I grew up Um, working in legislature and that type of thing that I would just that was where I wanted to end up I wanted to end up in the legislature can I pause you for a second Courtney I'm super curious like at what point did you decide like nope this isn't it like was it in the coursework were you doing like something like how did you come to that that conclusion um yeah so probably like within the first I don't know semester I mean within the first two semesters of school that fall and spring semester I was taking a couple different classes my advisor was just like loading them on me I had like 15 credits my first semester one of those being a five credit staff class which I was like I'm gonna die and I did die like definitely did not do well in that class and ended up retaking it Um, but I like some of the professors just were not my cup of tea I was having a hard time understanding the material and just wasn't comfortable and couldn't like write as eloquently enough for them on their exams. And I just wasn't quite getting it. And it just didn't feel as comfortable to me as I thought it always would. And so probably within that first, second semester, I just said, I need something different. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Sorry. And I took you off track. Okay. So you decide political science, that's not the route. So what, where, where did that take you next? So I decided, well, maybe I could do journalism with a poli sci like minor, because I still love the poli sci, but like everyone had said, oh, well, journalism is like, you've always written super well. I feel like journalism would be perfect for you. Not trying to let anybody else lead where I was going, but it did kind of help me see like, you've done this forever. This is where you need to go. And so I started taking those intro classes and kind of wanted to stay on the poli side track, but I just kind of let it go all together. I just decided journalism is where I want to be. And I just kept taking the classes and it just felt so comfortable to me and just so like perfect that I just stayed on that track. And within, um, just my coursework and my extracurriculars. I was involved in collegiate 4-H up here. And I say up here, but you know. In anyways. Logan, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and I actually, was involved. Oh, I was going to say, I keep interrupting you. I have so many questions, but I am curious for those who are not familiar with this concept of 4-H, whether in high school or at the collegiate level, talk to us a little bit about just like overview basics. What is 4-H? Yeah. So 4-H is kind of a youth development program that focuses on youth ages as early as like six, but it starts with Clover Buds at eight and then goes up to your senior year of high school for youth. 
And so there's different project areas from livestock, like the county fairs. Those are where people show livestock. Um, and they raise those projects mostly from the time the animal's born up until the fair time, and then they sell them. And that is a big project within Utah and Idaho, especially, and throughout the United States. But for those not involved in livestock or not, they can't have animals or land, they don't have land to be able to care for those. There are different project areas as far as sewing to robotics to leadership to Legos, anything and everything you could get involved in. There's literally something for everyone. Very cool. And okay. I, yes. Yeah. No, that's great. And I was just going to say, keep going. Okay. I keep interrupting you. So I promise I won't, I won't interrupt you anymore. <laughs> Okay, oh, but so you were good. involved involved in 4-H. That's great. Yeah, I was involved in 4-H from the time I was eight and got involved through some people in my community. And then my um, family was super involved in it. My family has over 100 years of 4-H involvement just through wow. my grandparents and my parents and my like aunts and uncles and my cousins all the way down, just like wide spectrum. And so it's just kind of a family thing. And we were all involved in it, different projects, different experiences, but it was just something our family could do together. Very cool. So that kind of kickstarted my experience. Um, and I knew because I kind of had two different options. Everyone that I grew up with was kind of like, go to University of Idaho, which is in Moscow. And like, that's the kind of 4-H you know, agriculture school of Idaho. And then I had like people tying me to Utah State, like go to Utah State, it's closer, like Moscow's further away. And, but I wanted that 4-H experience to continue beyond my senior year because I had so many amazing experiences with it. And I just wanted to continue that. Um, and then, so I was involved in collegiate 4-H and I got involved with the Statesman, which is the Utah State newspaper on campus. And I found that in my sophomore year. I wish I found it earlier, but I worked at the Statesman kind of as an intern and then worked my way up to getting paid and not being in charge of people, but almost like being in charge of people just as a senior writer and someone that was kind of the example within my section to like, hey, you need to, you know, get these articles in and get them written and then go from there. And so that was a really awesome experience just to kind of help my writing along because I thought I was, you know, knew everything, but obviously I did not know everything. <laughs> and those experiences kind of tailored like I was able to learn a lot through my coursework and being able to write as well as being able to have it kind of on the side as a job and like a hobby almost. Uh, so Courtney, I would love to hear a little bit more about, um, so how did that degree transition into your current job or how did it lead there, I guess? Um, that's a really good question. So I because I had been involved in collegiate 4-H, I did collegiate 4-H all um, five years of school. And that was kind of why I wanted to come to Utah State was because I found out they had a collegiate 4-H program and I said, like, sign me up. I want to do this. So I'll just give a little, like, collegiate 4-H is a little bit different um, where we kind of help um, within that 4-H community, but we're kind of like leaders exemplars like that volunteers kind of so we do a lot of like service and things throughout the community but we also kind of help um those younger kids or we're given different leadership roles to like assist where we're needed just kind of as an example so each year of collegiate for each was just a little bit different for me um but I love my experiences and everything that I was able to do was just incredible like things I wouldn't have been able to do anywhere else and so the people that I met there were kind of my contact into this position because I'm now working for two people that were kind of involved in collegiate 4-H so I found out that the job posting um the job came open in February and 
I just kind of said, I'm so stupid if I do not apply for this. Like, this is perfect. I don't know exactly how it fits, but I want to do this. And so I kind of had to talk to my husband and figure some things out, but I applied for it and they decided to hire me. And now I'm working for two people that I've known literally my whole college experience. Wow. And so it's been like, I feel like a lot of my background in 4-H led me here because I'd always kind of wanted to stay involved, but the volunteer aspect like can go as far as you want or not as far as you want, like however you want, wherever you want to go, the sky's the limit. Um, but being able to work in 4-H is just awesome. Like your, your thing goes that much further, your expertise and your knowledge goes that much further. And so I feel like definitely collegiate 4-H and my this background and connection led me to where I am. Yeah. So many great insights, Courtney. You know, one of the things that I love is you ended up kind of sifting out a couple of areas that you have always um, found enjoyment in, right? You kind of mentioned writing. You've always kind of enjoyed that. Um, and then kind of like this agriculture 4-H side of things, you've always kind of participated in that. So I love that you were able to take those two interests and actually kind of combine them together to kind of um, work towards a degree and, and a and a career, which is really cool. So I love that. And I also love that you touched on the importance of getting involved early on and building connections. And I love that in your specific example, that is what actually led you to your job. And I think so often that's the case. Um, So I I love that you're encouraging, from my perspective, encouraging folks to get involved early on and make those connections early on, because you never know, you never know where those are going to lead. So I love that story. I think that's a really great example of of the importance of student involvement. And while involvement can look very different, especially, you know, for a statewide student, involvement might be more community-based than maybe, you know, within the the institution. But I think in a lot of ways, we can still get involved regardless. So love, love, love that. I'm super curious. So in your current job as an agriculture and animal science assistant, what are some of the skills? So if you had to like give me a list of like must-have skills, what are some of the skills you need to be effective in your work? I would definitely say communication is a huge one. Um, My boss especially is crazy busy because she is involved in the programming throughout the state. So she's traveling a lot. She is going to a lot of different um, events and helping people with their livestock and their animal projects. And so being able to communicate not just with her, but other people and other 4-H, I don't know the word, but just people that are, that we touch every day, that we're um, involved with every day, just being able to communicate different things and being able to clearly portray what we need and like different things like that, I feel like is a huge one. Yeah. Um, Another one I would say is just being organized because there's a lot within this job that can get like, misplaced if you don't stay organized and that could be anything from just organizing information organizing like folders you know documents important things like that like organization has been a huge one for me I'm not perfect I'm not 100% at it but I've learned that like if I stay more organized my job is a little bit easier because there are things coming at me from every direction so it's important to stay organized Um, And another one, I have a few little notes here. I recently just attended my first horse show um, for the state. And I was mostly behind the scenes because a lot of my job is more behind the scenes, getting things done, getting things ready for different events. And in my interview for this position, I was asked how I handle confrontation. And confrontation has never been something I love. I don't know anyone who loves confrontation, um, but it is a necessary part of our job. There's people who get upset. There's people who don't appreciate like the way things are done sometimes and that's okay, it's a human thing. Um, But I had to deal with confrontation in that little weekend and it was not, something I wanted to do it wasn't easy 
but I just had to practice and tell myself like you're the one who has to explain this to these people and so being able to just kind of put my feelings aside and not get hurt and not you know get my feelings hurt yeah. I just had to to handle that confrontation the best I knew how and that is an important skill just wherever you are um and I also work this is kind of a side note but I also work in retail and so I've learned a lot through my experience in retail that it's not always a pretty picture and people aren't always going to be happy and so you have to to figure that out as well yeah absolutely skills yeah, no, I love all of those. And, you know, I think a lot of those are transferable regardless, you know, of the position, right? Being able to communicate, whether it's written, you know, whether you're writing an email or you're explaining something maybe to an upset customer or client, like all of those are, those are great skills. So I appreciate you sharing those, especially within the context of the job that helps kind of bring them to life, I think. So that's really helpful. I'm curious. So if we're thinking about like a career trajectory, um, for a job like this, and you can give me like specifics, or you could think outside of 4-H if you wanted, but you know, where might one go from this position or like, what other options are there out there that are kind of connected to this role? That's a good question. And one I've kind of been trying to think about. Um, So I feel like this position could take you, take anyone a lot of different directions. For me, it's kind of that beginning I don't know how long I'll be here, Um, just depended on life and where we end up next. But I feel like this is a really good beginning um, for someone who wants to just see the ins and outs of extension and the ins and outs of 4-H. And I think from there, it could go a lot of different directions. For me specifically, I, um, my emphasis was in print so kind of you know not something that's well heard of anymore there's not a lot of print ag out there anymore but there are magazines and certain newspapers that are still alive and well so that's good um for me I think that's kind of where I wanted to end up in the beginning but this is kind of fits more of my life right now because I married and have an 18 month old. And so being out in the field as a reporter would just be a little too much and a little overwhelming, especially with my husband working full time. It would just be a lot. Um, But I feel like it's a good like opening for anybody who wants to stay involved in maybe 4-H, maybe ag and animal science type things. Um, It could lead to my boss's job, which is um, the program assistant for the state, but I don't really see myself going that direction. Sure, sure. Um, And I think it could also lead to just other opportunities with an extension. It could be a 4-H coordinator. It could be an extension specialist somewhere along the way. There are a lot of different, different ways it could go. I could end up back in the field writing. I don't know. It's kind of keeping open options open. Right now. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great. And so you really quick, I'd love to tap into this just because we have you on the call. Talk to us a little bit about USU extension. Uh, b- before we hopped on the call, actually, I had kind of hinted that there's some maybe, I don't know if confusion is the right word, but some curiosity around what is extension and how does it, how is it different from maybe other programs offered at USU? So talk to us a little bit, just generally, what is, what is extension? Yeah. So extension is more of like that community um, component to agriculture and it's not just agriculture but that's kind of where I my expertise comes from so it's kind of that um, community component it's been around forever and it's kind of just giving everyone that access to education Um, if you know anything or if anyone knows anything about the first ag colleges throughout the U.S., they were created to give everyone, even farmers, that access to education. And so extension is kind of that component that comes in and ties it all together. So you can give everyone access to education. Everybody can have access to that um, agriculture component, but also just 
anything in general that you may want to learn about. There's different classes, there's different um, opportunities you can get involved with 4-H as well that just helps bring it all together and bring it back to the community. Fabulous. Hopefully that was a general Yes, Not that was perfect. Understand. No, that was great. Well, thank you so much for explaining that for us today. I think that's a great insight. It's always helpful to learn a little bit about different processes and programs that happen across the university because there's so many ways to get involved. So I appreciate you talking just a little bit about that. Um, Courtney, we're just about out of time, but I would love to ask you one final question. And that question is about advice. Um, if a student you know, were to come to you and say, Courtney, I'm kind of interested in the work that you do. What is some advice that you would give to that student? Ooh, very good question. Um, I think just as far as like schooling goes, just keep all your options open. Um, I did not think I had actually been turned down for a lot of positions throughout college um, within extension, within 4-H. And I just thought I'm never going to get there. Like I'm never going to work for extension. This is my passion, but like Maybe I just don't have what they're looking for. Maybe I need more experience. Maybe the list goes on and on. Um, but I would just say to keep going, like keep looking for those opportunities. There's always ways to get involved, no matter if you're in your first year of school, if you're not even in school yet, if you're graduating, there's always an opportunity available. This opportunity didn't come until a year after I graduated and was just to stay at home mom getting through the pandemic like that was legitimately all I was doing and I just kept those connections and the doors just opened for me I had the experience I'd been involved there's no limit to what you can do if you just stay involved and keep looking for those opportunities Great advice, Courtney. And I love that you're kind of hinting at this idea of career paths not being linear. I try and dispel that myth as often as I can with folks. Um, but sometimes, like you said, sometimes it takes a year off and sometimes it takes a couple of twisty paths that maybe take us away and then kind of, you know, bring us back to that core idea that we're interested in. Sometimes we have to take a kind of a messy path to get to where we want to go next. So I really appreciate you highlighting that in your advice uh, and encouraging students to get involved. Um, again, I want to thank you so much for our conversation today. I've learned so much about extension and, and the work that you do. So I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today. Yeah, thank you so much for reaching out to me. Of course. We hope you loved this episode of the USU Career Studio podcast. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and share this episode with your friends and family.